here obviously for testing yep yeah, and that's correct and what is all this here so this is our our hangar slash museum okay so why does this one have so many antennas all over it what is its job we chose this platform because of its versatility and we're just trying to think of new ways to utilize that ability that the plane has and one of them is to act as an aerial relay for a ground system. Oh, the, the ground little, rover. this thing. Oh, the little truck, okay. This will relay to that? That's correct. So basically we'll put the plane up in a loiter and then it'll fly around in a circle autonomously. While that's happening, it's actually rebroadcasting three separate signals. It's broadcasting the RC <laughs> link mm -hmm. and the video link and the telemetry link for the autopilot that's inside of the rover. That's really cool, because normally if you get behind something or over a hill, you've lost your communication. That's With right. this and the air relaying that, you could drive that a lot farther. That's right, so that even if you have cool. a very powerful transmitter, mm -hmm. the best you can get, um, the yeah. most powerful, it's not gonna do you any good, because as soon as you go down the smallest ditch or hill, um, yeah, you'll lose, you've lost you it. lose your yeah. signal. <laughs> okay, so now onto the multi rotors. I see you've got quite an uh, interesting variety here. Of course, right. your standard hexacopter, uh, Y6 folded up. This is what's interesting. 12 propellers mm -hmm. and 16, really? Yeah, <laughs> 16 propellers. More How? propellers, more better. The controller doesn't work any harder than usual. And the 16 is, of course, an octocopter that's parallel That's together. together. One limb is still one limb for control. You just wide it off. It's really a lot of wires. <laughs> that's the biggest problem with it. They're wired. We got some interns over the summer. And oh, I see. And I was like, oh, here you go. You like, you like wiring stuff, don't you, here? So many that, that is an impressive looking aircraft. It, it, that's, that's, it how does it fly? Um, it's really stable. The 12 rotor was actually, uh, we made it so that we could rescue our copters that crashed into trees. So it has a power to pull our copter out of a tree? Absolutely. How are you attaching? How are you grabbing onto them? Um, we attached some 550 cord to a high power magnet. Um, that okay. way it can let go. And I we, see. Don't, we don't lose two copters. Uh, yeah, that'd be... <laughs> but it will pull the, if you touch it to the motor, it'll pull it right out. Have you had to use it yet? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, back when we were figuring out how to make an autopilot, um, especially for multi-rotors. Got it. So this is our, kind of our laboratory. Like laboratory, okay. It's like R&D stuff. With, little uh, research with, and with development. The toys. Lots of custom one-off works being done here. This is sort of different from our, just like a higher power aircraft that can lift bigger payloads, fly okay. longer, a little, it's a little beefier. Um, yeah, it looks... It's more industrial grade. I see it's got the, got the pan tilt zoom on the, on the front there, not yep, just the so pan tilt. So you got a 36 times zoom camera on the front, three axis brushless gimbal. Um, That's killer. Zoom control, focus control, everything That's is nice. integrated more. I see, so I see it's 3D printed here. Lots of 3D printed parts, carbon infused nylon. It's a little okay. stronger and lighter than your normal MakerBot. What is this? It looks like a coffee table propeller attached to it, it's huge. No, actually, this is how I got to work this morning. This is just another experimental project. Uh, we're testing the propulsion system and seeing what kind of endurance numbers and payload numbers we can get. So this is an off-the-shelf frame? Because everything's off the shelf. Looks like it folds also. It does. It folds up okay. downward like that. There's a, This is a Fox Tech 130, I believe. Really? And these are all the, the new T-Motor, -motor extra units. large size multi-rotor equipment. Yeah, pretty big um, there. And it gets bigger than this, believe it or not. This is the smallest version. This is the small one? Yeah. Let's so see. right now we're running an 8 cell. 8 cell. About 25,000 milliamps. Okay, so this is very interesting. It says ready-made RC on the side, but it doesn't look stock to me. What's, what is Well, we've what made a this? few changes. <laughs> what we wanted is see how we can combine all the multi-rotor development that we've been working on with the fixed wing development. I really, really like it. I mean, uh, seeing it take off vertically is, it just looks unreal, like unnatural, which is very exciting. But it flies great. It's a great um, overall airplane anyway, even mm -hmm. before the mods. I mean, I think they did a good job on the What's on the inside there? What do you have for flight controllers in this thing? Uh, it's on a separate, separate receiver. Separate receiver? Separate pilot. Oh, okay. Initially, yeah. So um, that's the safest way to do it yeah. for the first time. For the first time. But we're able to combine them all into one transmitter. That's um, cool. And this is a, a certain kind of vertical takeoff aircraft. It's called a SLT, which is separate lift and thrust. Separate, ah, got it. I see. Yeah. So it's not it's a completely separate sitter. motors for lift and thrust. This is my favorite, my favorite thing in the building here. <laughs> All right, and so what do you do over here? So 
So this section is dedicated to our return and repair department. Oh, okay. Hey. So uh, this is Arturo. He's hey, Arturo. Doing good, good. good to meet you. Good to meet, to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So what do you do here? The copters uh, have a warranty. Whatever is broken or not working on it, we replace it. We make sure that it's working or it's a uh, proper uh, working conditions. We test fly it and we send it back to the customer. If it's our fault, we replace okay. it right away. No questions asked. If not, we you know kind of get into a deal with the customer, make sure that he gets a unit on a cheaper price. Well, that's a good yeah, deal. We, yeah, we take care of the customer. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, Gerald, thank you. You're welcome. All right. This is our quality control department. Oh, very so important. They are testing and making sure that every single product that we produce is working standard. Outstanding. How's it going? Hey! So this is Jason. He's the lead of the quality control team. Hey, Jason. Nice how to meet you doing? You. Nice to meet you. So uh, what do you guys do here, I mean, specifically? Basically, all the boards that go through 3D Robotics, we'll test it to make sure it has proper testing code. We test the boards to make sure they don't have any tombstones, cold solder, improper placement. You know, it's really important that this whole board is one solid piece as far as IMU systems, mags, barometers, potentiometers. We make sure that the motors run up, they don't make any funny sounds, Loctite's good. We'll catch just about everything. We've had pretty good luck with our program so far, so I'm really proud of my crew and all that we've done. Outstanding. Well, get out of your hair and let you keep after right. it. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Good to meet you. So is there anything people haven't seen yet, something new? Well, we can't show you everything today, of course, but we can give you a hint. In this case right here, we'll go maybe one of our future products. Can open this up and uh, show you the shape. A boat. I like boats. It's, it's this shape, whatever it is, and it's top secret. Uh, you got to stay tuned and check out our website. <laughs> And uh, maybe when that happens and it does come out, um, okay. we can do another review with you guys. Oh. So that's it for our visit to 3D Robotics in sunny San Diego, California. We'll hope you enjoy watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe.